This is an incredible facility. I wish I had this down in my backyard. Uh, and also, while Larry Jones is taking a photograph, would everybody please give AEP Texas a round of applause for being our biggest sponsor? <laughs> and Blasita, with the Convention and Visitor Bureau, will be up here talking to you in a minute. And when she does, would you please give her a round of applause for our, she's, she is, we could not have done a lot of things that we're doing without her help, including my fundraising. So I owe her a lot, uh, my life, I think. Anyhow, economics, I started life as an investment broker. I used to think that the only artists there were in the world were people who could do things with their hands. And my stick men or my things that, look, that I tried to draw were non-existent. You couldn't even recognize my stick men as stick men. So I thought I was never an artist. And it took me till I became an investment broker that I realized that art can also be in the form of a silver tongue. And so that's what I do best, and normally I ask people for money. But I've also been in conservation for 30 years, and I never saw us apply economics to conservation, and we never seemed to win. Now, winning, you know, if you go and listen to, and I take all the magazines, they talk about, well, we won this battle, or we won this, but it was always winning over somebody else. It was never creating wealth or creating jobs or creating something that led to conservation. And so that was my goal, was to find an economic tool that would allow conservation and wildlife habitat and wildlife to become a dominant force for a private landowner to keep rather than always fighting with nature. And so I've thrown a few pictures in. These images were all taken by amateur photographers on private ranches. I will offer, since I'm going to have to go pretty fast and ignore some of these things, since I only have 20 minutes and I usually love an hour for this, uh, anyone who would like to have the PowerPoint part of this with the, docu you know, the document part of it, I'll be happy to uh, copy and send to you. Uh, I don't think I can do the images that well. Essentially, when we started, we started with this. Make no small plans, for they fail to stir men's souls. And I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. And that's why our goal, and you'll see this later, is to turn a $2 billion industry into a $100 billion industry. And I realize it will probably take place long after I'm gone. I have to give credit for Bruce Hoffman, capitalism and conservation. And that's what I believe in. These guys are what I will, will cause it. And it's everything out there in nature that can be photographed. And nature photo tourism is the key to conservation. And we're here because this is probably the most virgin area of the entire United States in terms of photography. Sustainable development is the answer to conservation. And I hope some of these, again, amateur photographers, you professionals out there probably saying, I, I could take that in a heartbeat and make it a lot better. Uh, but. These are pretty good images. Six years ago, there were no ranches offering na nature photography anywhere that I was aware of. Now we have 11. Next year, we'll have 20. I think we'll see significant growth. I, I, every time I talk to a rancher, they're planning to open their ranches for nature photography tourism. The most important thing, I think, and is that 
landowners stop fighting nature when they have photography because in the middle of the worst drought, if you have a puddle no bigger than this area here, you can make money from photography because every critter on that ranch has got to come to that puddle. And if you've got a photo blind set up on it, you might have sold off all your cows. And you may have no income from the surface, but if you've got that, you can make some money. This is a photo setting to one of the ranches north of Raymondville. And, and it's simply a, a small water hole. This feature right up there is where he brings the, he's got a drip, and all the birds come in there so that everybody's photographing at eye level. Here's why I think we've got to talk to the private landowner. You know, how can you have conservation of wildlife habitat if you're not talking to the people who own the land? And we're talking trillions of dollars if you think the federal government is going to buy all this and conserve it. It's an elephant. Everybody sees this thing in something different. When I talked to Blas Castaneda at the uh, Laredo Community College, and he's in economic development, what he's looking for is how do we create jobs? How do we create wealth? How do we create careers? How do we build an educational system around this? And since we have a photography professor in here, we, it, it applies to the universities as well as it applies to the ranchers. But everybody that looks at this says, hey, that's a good idea, but they're looking at it with their point of view, and I love it. These, these slides, the pictures are on a seven-second cycle, so I don't have to worry about it. But it gives you a chance... We have, there is no secret to photo blind creation. We've built them out of plywood and two by fours. We've built them out of PVC. They've been built out of aluminum. They've been built out of tubular steel. And, and every single one of them comes with their own good positives and their own negatives. The ones in the ground, you can't move for the focal length of the camera. The ones that move, the first 60 mile an hour wind, you get them in the next county. Is the market there? That's the number one thing ranchers ask me. There are 30 million people that photograph wildlife every single year in the United States. But they don't come to Texas and they don't go to private lands. And that's the key. And that's why it's only a $2 billion industry, because we don't have the private sector involved. I think that the market, number one, with 86 million people in the United States who do something with wildlife every year, the, every single one of those is a potential recreational photographer. So the market potential is huge. What's that? Oh, sorry. Somebody. Here's, here's what I'm looking at. If we can turn this into a $100 billion industry, that 10 million acres across the United States, I think, will all be in conservation and will be open to the public. There will be 10 million acres that will be open to the public to enjoy and to learn and to photograph and those landowners will be making money. It won't be free, but it'll be better than you'll ever get on public land. 